Welcome to About Scripture, a podcast designed to take the listener deeper into Scripture and biblical thought. This podcast is brought to you in partnership with Heritage Christian University, where we help students to thrive in ministry. To find out more, go to hcu.edu. We're also partnering with the Ministry League Network. And now, welcome to the podcast. The assigned topic is balancing the mission and the home. And I had already planned on saying, Travis, that had I been a better preacher, a better theologian, I would have figured out a way to talk about the 70 weeks of Daniel 9 in terms of balancing the home and the mission. I have no doubt that Augustine could have done such a thing and probably did, but this might not be the first time you have realized that I am no Augustine. So we abandon Daniel for the moment and head to other scriptures. I trust that this is not the first time you have heard a lesson on this topic, or at least that it will not be the last time. And so I have no need to tell you everything that might be said about this topic. I'm not going to give you a checklist. I had thought about giving a checklist of things to think about. I'm not going to do that. Just maybe give you a way of thinking about balancing the mission and the home. Well, when we think about any biblical topic, uh, certainly any, any biblical topic that we need to display in our lives, this one is, of course, very practical. How do we go about doing this? We want to think about what examples do we have in Scripture of doing this? And when we think about examples in Scripture for anything, we think of the perfect example. Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we want to know, we want to think to ourselves in the Gospels, how is it that Jesus balanced the mission and the home? Any suggestions? When you think about Jesus, I mean, y'all have read the Gospels. Think about the picture of Jesus that you get from the Gospels. Balance the mission and the home. Is that like, yes, Jesus did that. I mean, that, that's what he did. What scriptures might address this topic The one that pops into my mind when I think about Jesus is the end of Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3, verses 31 and following, where Jesus' mom and his brothers came to visit him, and some guy said to Jesus, hey, your mom and your brothers are outside. You remember how Jesus responded? Who are my mother and my brothers? And he looked around, those who do the will of God. Balance the home and the mission? Well, okay, on this talk, maybe Jesus, he's the son of God. He's got his own special mission. Maybe he's not. Maybe the perfect example on this particular topic. Let's, let's shift gears and think about somebody else. Let's think about somebody like, oh, the apostle Paul. That we often think of, well, if we're not going to take an example from Jesus, let's take an example from Paul. Balancing the mission and the home. Is that something you associate? Well, that's illustrated well by the Apostle Paul. He really had that balance down pat. What scriptures might speak to this topic from the Apostle Paul? I'll tell you what, the one that pops into mind is 1 Corinthians 7. Have you read 1 Corinthians 7 recently? The the passage starts, Now concerning the matters about which you wrote, it is well for a man not to touch a woman. The apostle continues. I want to skip a little bit and go down to verse 7. I wish that all were as I myself am. What does he mean by that? He means not married. Don't you know that this is a big distraction? Don't you know that if you are trying to balance the mission with home, 
that home is going to win out. It's going to distract you from the purposes of God. You're going to be concerned about what your wife wants, not what the Lord wants. Boo on balance. He says, to the unmarried and the widows, I say, it is well for them to remain unmarried as I am. Don't you dare try to balance home life with the mission. Unless you think you're going to go to hell. And then maybe it's okay to get married. Better to get married than to burn, the apostle says. The apostle said it. That's not me. That's the apostle. Okay, okay, maybe Jesus is the perfect example in, uh, of most things, but maybe not in this. And maybe Paul, he's a special case. God called him to be the apostle of the Gentiles. Maybe we shouldn't take our cues from, from Jesus and the apostle in this. I mean, surely Jesus didn't think that this is the way that all apostles, uh, all disciples, rather, ought to live their life. What can we know about that? What, what can we know about the way Jesus thought just disciples in general ought to think about this topic? Well, the scripture that comes to mind is Luke chapter 18, verse 29. And he said to them, truly, I tell you, there is no one who has left house or wife or brothers or parents or children, for the sake of the kingdom of God, who will not get back very much more in this age and in the age to come, eternal life. Is that a statement of balance? It seems to me the exact opposite. What other scriptures might help us think through this? Uh, okay, what is the mission? By the way, what? Okay, balance home and mission. Balance mission and home. What? What is the mission? Uh, you know, if we were to ask somebody, if we were to ask, maybe, maybe we ask Jesus. Do do we trust him on this? Do we trust Jesus to give us accurate information on this? What is the mission, Jesus? What ought we to be doing? What is? I don't know. What is the greatest? Uh, commandment. Is there a great commandment that we ought to sort of dedicate our lives to that there are 613 of these things in the law? Is there one that sort of stands out, Jesus, that we ought to be thinking about more than any other? Is there one that ought to define our lives? Do you think Jesus would have an answer if we asked him that? Did you know that somebody did ask him that question one time? Somebody did ask him, and Jesus did have an answer to that. This is Matthew chapter 20, verses 34 and through 40. Somebody did ask him, what is the greatest command? And the, and the answer Jesus supplied is that passage that Josh read for us a little bit earlier from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. The answer is the greatest command. You ought to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, I look, different gospels have it different ways. I forget what words are included in the version in Matthew. In, in Deuteronomy, it's just heart, soul, and might. Mind is also thrown in there in the gospel sometimes. But look, the point is everything that you are. There is not an element of your being that you can leave out of this instruction. The great command is, the one that ought to sort of define your life is love God with your entire being. If you want a number two, Jesus is ready for that. He is ready to give you a number two, and that is love your neighbor as yourself. How much balance do we see here? There's not any. It is, in fact, completely and utterly imbalanced. There is no balance between the mission and home. Not if we take Deuteronomy 6 verses 4 and 5 as our mission, as what we have to do in this world. Love God with everything that we are. 
And as the apostle reminds us in 1 Corinthians 7, marriage is often a detriment to that purpose. Have you seen it? I've seen it. I know the apostle saw it. That not just marriage, home life, but marriage is a big part of that, is often a detriment to having your mind focused on loving God with everything, not just your mind, right? Your might, your soul, everything about you, your heart focused on loving God. The apostle knew what he was talking about. It is often a detriment to that. It is a distraction. And people get involved in that and suddenly making money is, becomes really important. And job security and guarding what you're saying and not doing certain things because how it will affect your family. All of that becomes really, really important. And that absolutely often becomes primary. Not Deuteronomy 6.5, but guarding the home life or what you think is going to be guarding the home life becomes primary and absolutely home life becomes a detriment to loving God with everything that you are. So, can marriage be redeemed? Is it okay to get married, do you think? Is it okay to have a home life at all? Everything I've read so far suggests you ought to be completely and utterly sold out for God. There is no balance to talk about. Balance is for people pretending to be Christians. Not for people who actually want to follow Jesus. Is it okay to get married? Well, let, let me admit that 1 Corinthians 7 is actually not the only passage in the Bible that talks about marriage. It's, it's not the only passage in the New Testament, and I would even say it's not the only passage from the Apostle Paul that talks about marriage. 1 Corinthians 7 is not the only passage where the Apostle Paul talked about marriage. He talked about it, look, I mean, some people are able to read 1 Corinthians 7 and say that Paul actually really liked marriage from that passage. I mean, it doesn't look like it to me. I mean, it is a last case, you know, scenario, last resort uh, to keep you out of hell. That's what it looks like in 1 Corinthians 7. Am I right, Travis? That's what he says. But it's not the only passage where he talked about marriage. There's another one that's maybe the passage you think of if you think about marriage, Ephesians chapter 5. So let me just reflect on this for a second. Ephesians 5. Wives, and it says this is verse 22. Wives, be subject to your husbands as you are to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is the head of the church, the body of which he is the Savior, just as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives ought to be in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her in order to make her holy, by cleansing her with the washing of water by the word, so as to present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or anything of the kind. Yes, so that she may be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as they do their own bodies. 
He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hates his own body, but he nourishes and tenderly cares for it, just as Christ does for the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. Now, let me ask you, what is the topic that the apostle has been talking about for 10 verses now? It's husbands and wives, right? It's, it's marriage. Hasn't he been talking about that? Sounded like it. Verse 32. This is a great mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church, the apostle says. Sounded like he was talking about marriage. Sounded like he was talking about a man and a woman and how husbands should treat wives and wives should treat husbands. But he thinks he's been talking about Christ and the church. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Wives, be subject to your husbands as the church is to Christ. It sounds like what Paul is saying is that a marriage is an opportunity, a unique opportunity. Let, let's, let's call it home life, is a unique opportunity to model in this world, the relationship that Christ has with the church. In fact, I would say it is an opportunity to model that in this world that you don't get any other way. That if the point of life is loving God with everything that we are, how do we go about doing that? And it sounds to me like in Ephesians 5, Paul thinks one way to do it, a unique way to do it is in the home. That in the home, you are able to display the love of God in this world in a way that you can't do it any other way. You are not going to get this opportunity like you are in home. You are not going to get this opportunity at church. It's just not going to happen. And the way you can display the love of God in your home, you are not going to get this opportunity when you go to India or when you go to the Philippines or you go to Montana or wherever you are going to go. You are not going to get this opportunity. This opportunity is unique to the home. It's not about balance. There is no balance you're not trying to balance home with the mission. Home is the mission. The point of life is displaying the love of God and loving God with everything that we have, and you will get that opportunity. Look, Look, I believe what the apostle said in 1 Corinthians 7, and if you want to dedicate your life to celibacy and to serving God, God bless you. You are imitating Jesus and the apostle, and we love you for it. And if you want to get married, you have an opportunity to display the love of God in that relationship in a way that you can't do any other way. Caleb, can you put that picture up? This picture is my wife's grandparents. This is Nana and Papa. You can see they're going through a hard time at this moment that this picture was taken, I think, in 2016. Nana is in the hospital. Papa is by her side. I forget how long they were married at this point. I was privileged 
to do both of their funerals. Their marriage is heading toward its final days at the moment that this picture is taken. When you see the picture, what do you see? I see faithfulness. Here are two people that have stood by each other. They have kept their vows. They vowed some 50 years earlier, 60 years earlier maybe, I forget how long, that they would stay true to one another in sickness and in health and I forget all the things, rich and poor and all of that, good times and bad. And they were faithful to that. In this moment, when he's reaching out his hand and she's taking it, that's faithfulness that we're seeing. When I look at this picture, I see longing. He is longing for her and she is reciprocating that longing. He just wants her to feel good. He wants to be with her. Behold, Christ and the church. There is no balance about it. There is no way to balance it. Our lives, if we are disciples of Christ, if we follow him in his example, if we do what he says, he's pretty clear about it. There can be no such thing as a balance Everything that we are is given to God. And that includes our home. Thank you for your attention.